So welcome back friends. Today we're going to be building a, a handle uh, for Grandad's seven pound maul using the traditional method. We'll be using, uh, doing everything with hand tools and what you're going to, uh, what I'll show you today is something that can apply to any handle that you want to make for a vintage tool, whether it be a smaller maul or even an ax handle uh, using, w without having to have a bunch of special stuff or a real elaborate wood shop. We're going to be using just a few simple hand tools that, uh, that you can uh, acquire yourself for, for very little money and have really great results. So let's take a look at the wood that we're going to choose and then we'll get into it. A special project like this deserves a special piece of wood, wouldn't you agree? Here we have a piece of beautiful flat sawn eight quarter hickory. Hickory, of course, makes the best tool handles. Ash would probably be a number, a number two, if that's what you have. But hickory, boy, well, if you can get it, is the, this is the good stuff. Straight grain, not a knot in it, just bone dry, beautiful, and ready to go. What I've found to be about perfect for my hands, having large size hands and wearing large gloves, as far as the diameter, is about inch and nine sixteenths to inch and an eighth finish, having that oval is more pleasing to the hand and easier to hold on to and less fatiguing than, a, than just a perfectly round handle. Combination square is an amazing tool. Sometimes it's easy to take for granted the one, what a blessing it is to have these tools that have been invented by craftsmen over the last several hundred years. I think typically for most guys, you're gonna want a couple of heavy mauls, hammers. Um, for the larger ones, when I talk, talk about big two-handled hammers, you're gonna want a 10-pounder and then a seven pounder is nice. And what I see oftentimes in the ones you buy, the handles are too long on these seven pounders. What's about perfect, what my granddad came up with after a lifetime of use was about 24 inches. It's short, yeah, you can use it in confined areas. If you're working underneath your car and you need to smash things, the handle's not getting in your way. And it's just, that's what it's come down to. Now, when you have with your big hammers, uh, you know, your 10 pounders are better, then you want a full length handle, you know, a 32 inch handle or so. But this is, if you don't have one, is it will be your go-to hammer. You will uh, absolutely love it. It's just so versatile and you can just move so much with it. Now don't forget grain orientation. This is very, very important. You see here that we want the, the long axis of the handle, you know, our inch and three quarters to be, th to run with the grain right here. If we hammer this way, let's say that our hammer head goes this way, the grain's gonna have a tendency to wanna to split and open open up, it won't be as strong. Whereas if we change the orient, if we create the handle this way, now we have our grain structure going this way. And even though it's not perfectly, you know, running parallel with the, with the eye of the maul, it still is, I, I'm comfortable with it even up to a 45. That's not a big deal. But this here, we have a really nice, just you know, maybe 20, 30 degrees or so. And I'm, I'm, I'm or probably 20 degrees. I'm, I'm happy with that. This is all the layout that we need to do for our first ripping cut right there. We've got our inch and three quarters and then our 24 for a cross cut. To do a rip cut, we're going to use the Japanese pole saws. I have um, recently discovered these and I... I really love them. Nice to have two. This is a large one, one of the larger ones that they make, and this is more of a smaller, medium-sized one. And what's really cool about these saws is that you can rip and cross-cut with them. If you look closely, you'll see that you have got these big teeth right there. Those are for your ripping. And then you've got these finer teeth, which are for cross-cutting. So it's a really versatile saw, and they're not very expensive. You can get them between $30 and $40 or so. Roll up your sleeves, because here's where the real work begins. <laughs> rip, rip cutting. Uh, eight quarter hickory uh, by hand is no small deal. We're gonna cut on the outside of our line there. If your wood's got a lot of tension in it, you might find that it's pinching um, the saw. And so just take your a small wedge and you can put a wedge in there to hold that out a little bit, and that will free up the saw from binding in the kerf. With our first rib cut done, now we can flip our saw over and we can make our cross cut.
freeing the handle from the billet. Traditional woodworking, it really is a great hobby. It just takes so little space and just a handful of tools. It's just a very enjoyable, enjoyable process. Now we can do our second and final rip cut, which is going to be our width. Our rough is going to be inch and a quarter. Next, we'll put our billet back in the vise here and we'll use our plane and just square everything up and smooth out all of the, the saw marks. So here's our finished billet, nice and square and right plain down to the dimensions. That's why, you know, when you, we did that rough cut that we went over an eighth and then planed that last little bit down to take out any inconsistencies or crookedness from, from the saw cut. Cause I'm, I certainly uh, don't cut very straight all the time. So here we can kind of see right there, we get an idea of the scale of it. It's going to be just a wonderful handle or hammer. This is going to be the go-to. Uh, nice and short, compact, 24 inches is a good length, and just uh, that's what you want right there. You could just do so much with that. Here's a little trick that I came up with to help symmetry with making the radius in your handle, is I um, do a quarter all of this, or I find the center point of each side, and I draw a nice heavy line both ways here. And what that it gives me now, it gives me reference points. If, you flip, if I flip this over here, you'll see that I've got lines on all four sides. And now what, what my goal is, is I want to pull a radius down between these two lines here, just like this. And what I'll do is now, as we start working these corners down, we'll leave those lines alone. That way we can pull right to the lines and get a nice consistent radius on there. And don't worry if it's not perfect. It doesn't matter. It's that's the the beauty of, um, of of a handmade handle like this is it are those inconsistencies because our hands are so sensitive. You know, you can just feel everything with your hands. And uh, when I grab something that's machine made, you can tell right away because it's usually very consistent. But something that's handmade, this has those it, the, just those little flaws and things that to me um, give it character and charm. To rough out this handle, I'm going to use a, an old clamping system called a shave horse. I built this last year. This is actually the first handle that, I've ever, that I remember making. I don't think I've made a handle on this. I've just made just a few other things. But uh, this is definitely the best because it uh, you can use your feet and put pressure and then quickly move the handle around and get to all sides. Now I've made hundreds of handles before I had one of these and you don't need one. You can uh, simply clamp a, a wood clamp into a vise works really good. Um, but this, um, if you have the, this might be one of your good first project to build. There's a lot of good plans out there and, and they're not that hard to build and uh, they're just perfect for handles. The tools that I've found to work the best for these handles is, uh, there's two. This is a, a draw knife. This is a this is a really old one, a small one. Um, and when you're looking for these, you can find these at uh, antique stores and junk shops and lots of different places. Uh, a little one like this is really good for uh, this type of handles and stuff. There's some real big ones. There's even smaller ones. And specifically, this one, it's got, you can loosen these knobs right here and you can uh, change the angle of the handles, which I found really, really useful um, to, for all sorts of things. But uh, the... The draw knife is going to be used to do your heavy lifting. It's going to, what you're going to use to, to remove most of the material. It's a very quick, a very fast. You could actually finish a really nice handle with this and nothing else. Um, if you want to, what I found that I've recently started using is a small spoke shave that has a, uh, 
I don't even know what this was intended for, but it's got a radius on it. Focus there. It's got a radius on it and it helps you to do that. It helps you to get that round. You, it, you don't get so many flat spots. And this is the tool that I'll use uh, for finishing off. So I'll just start at the very end here and I can show you. I've already done three sides. You can kind of see, get your focus there. You can kind of see right here uh, how uh, useful it is, how handy it is to, to put those lines on there. Because I've just simply with it, I've just simply pulled down to those lines and just, you know, I, I have remnants of them there. I try to leave them, but I also want to get pretty close because that's, look how consistent that is. We, we're starting to get a nice oval and we've just got the one side right there unfinished. You can kind of see how that, how that works. It's a very effective way. So start on the end and just keep working back and forth until you're approaching the lines about the same time. Take your time. Don't get in any hurry because you've got a lot of time into the handle at this point and rushing it is just going to uh, it's going to um, it's going to ruin something so right there that's about as far as I'll go with the draw knife I'll uh, or with yeah with the draw knife um, and then I'll just keep working back pulling wood to myself now if you find that you're going against the grain you can see when you start to get a big tear out like that right there that's no problem, you know, that's why you start with a light touch because you're, you're reading the wood. You can simply turn your, turn your spoke shave around or your draw knife around and go in the other direction. The grain and the wood will change um, all the time and you have to always be reading that and making those adjustments. Right there, you can see now it's kind of changed again. So I'll come back to myself. Right there, we got kind of a transition of the grain. It's kind of, how do I explain it? It's kind of like a calic, you know, on, in hair, you know, where it kind of goes in the, all different directions or multiple directions in one spot. You have to be aware of those and make sure you uh, give a little extra care at those points.